All right, so welcome back. We are doing our playthrough of the Human Earth Elementalist of Happily Akana. We're confronted by a bee. We'll just swing at him with the staircase, and we'll actually use these guys will be really good to use is sandblast. So we'll do that. Confronted by more of them. Find that there's a gargoyle. We can actually just use these rapid deconstruction on here. And that's a quick work on that. So you get out of the way of this. A centaur. So we'll actually just go up the staircase. And we go to a different one. That one's a little a little chaotic. There's, there's a two-headed over, not really what we want to see. So we're going to That's good to know. We can start using poison vapors behind our little dude. We'll do the re we'll do the re now. Maybe we can use acid to finish it off. There we go. Oof. Okay, this floor is not. We gotta be more careful on this floor. Things are starting to get difficult. More stair dancing. Oh my goodness. What is with so many centaurs in this game? Just had a million centaurs attacking me. How many, how many arrows do I have right now? 150 arrows. I've had six centaurs in this game. D10. Jeez. I guess that's the way of the rando. on this one because we want to be able to reduce the burden from a shield plus this ring so strength is probably better yeah we'll do strength probably gonna do strength for the next couple can we do a fit of cloudy
Steam Dragon. There are those two dragon skills though, which we'll probably never even use this game. So there's our rear entrance. So here's the part of the game where we have a million options to do with a million different creatures that really don't need that many options to deal with. I mean, we have zero skill with our morning star protection, and most enemies are going to be pretty much fodder to us. So this is where things get a little bit less interesting. But we're going to try to make them a little more interesting. I'm going to try my best to narrate everything I'm doing here. So I'm going to cast an aesthetic cloud to try to confuse these guys, make them easier to deal with. Um, this is a big yak, actually. So it might be worth while for us. A lot of them are confused. And probably dispatch them very easily. I'm not going to use my magnetic cloud. Confuse the rest of them. Water. Yeah, Earth element was probably one of, if not the strongest starting class that you can pick. Probably similar is better. I like similar. All the casting classes are pretty strong. I think it helps the cube is also really powerful. But you just don't. Um, poison vapor is there just because. It's vulnerable to poison, so we're going to go down the layer. Hopefully, we have some interesting things happen in the layer here, because... Okay, so this is the Black Mamba. They have low magic resistance, so we're going to choose Petrification to try to get it petrified. And then, we're going to take it out just by... Hitting it with the morning star here. Um, I'm actually going to stop training spell casting. Start training maces. And we're going to find a brand weapon scroll eventually. In fact, one of these might even be a brand weapon scroll. So. Some stuff at it. Okay, so here's something interesting. We've got an eight headed Hydra, which can kill us in one hit. Uh, no problem. Oh, actually, that's eight. So it can bite eight times for up to 18 damage each. So we don't want that. We don't want that one bit. So we have some options here. We can. We can't really. Oh, I guess we could just try to petrify it. MR is actually decent, but 
There we go. So we'll just do the same as we dealt with everything else. Okay, now we want to run away. Let's see, now it can start coming after us again. So now we're gonna dance around a little bit, see if we can wait for our friend to appear again. So we have something to hide behind. Now we're petrified that we can actually get out of dodge. We want to be able to have some distance between us. Nothing. So we're just going to go up the staircase and not deal with this. We're going to go orc instead. Dealing with work will be a lot easier for us. Those hydras are really nasty. We have ways to deal with it, but now it's not going to cooperate. distortion. Yikes. Okay, flow of distortion. Also a weapon that we should consider using. Uh, flow of distortion would be pretty good. The nice thing about distortion is that the nice thing about distortion is that it'll blink them away from us, which is what we want generally. Um, it also banishes things. We're not going to go to the abyss for a room. That's not really what happily common does. Oh my God. I might actually use that. Yeah, yeah. Let's use a flare of distortion. Yeah, I like this. This is going well. minimum delay to get to as well, which is really nice. Where the shields have appeared? No shields yet. Feels bad. Yeah. Work store server. These things are nasty. Nasty, 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 nasty. We really don't want to interact with them when they have a 50% chance to paralyze us, which in this situation will basically mean we're dead. Um, also can summon demons, do a lot of things. So let's back up. And let's actually back up all the way to a staircase so we can run if needed. And there's a knight. Oh my gosh, really? 
this orc and lair entrance stuff is just terrible right now. We have high, an eight headed hydra guarding lair. We have two orc knights and orc sorcerer plus a band of warriors that are completely ruining our day. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. You just, you just don't. Hi, yeah, this is ridiculous. We need to like put an exclusion here and go back to. So now I think is a point where we need to start finding our blank school or something because. Oh man, we are in a lot of trouble. Hopefully we don't die in the middle of these stupid staircase. So let's try to drag this eight-headed hydra around and see if we can get our guy here to confuse it. Okay, so our plan worked. There we go. Butterfly strats. So now, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the eight headed hydra is devoured by terror reality. Booyah! Booyah! See, that's why we want distortion because it has insta kills. So now we're not. No, we're not doing so bad anymore. We're not doing bad at all. In fact, we're doing quite well. Yeah, space warps horribly around the snake. That's what I'm talking about. So let's do petrified frog. He's fast and he has low magic resistance, which a lot of enemies do. Um, watch his stone here. Finish him off like that. There's a box of beasts. Good little evocable item. I'll we'll probably end up using eventually. It's a cane toad. Same situation as the other King Toad. Devoured by tearing the down. Yes. So here's a trick. Um, with electric heals, they can deal a lot of damage. In fact, if you take a look at their electric bolt, uh, I'm not sure why it's not appearing. It's supposed to list the, the uh, damage. Um, hmm. it must be a glitch. I'll have to let PF now. Oh, yeah. I'll we'll send him this clip, actually. Hey there, PF. So, so here's the trick to these guys. You want to use Wand of Flame because it creates these steam clouds, which not only do they act as a smoke screen for you, literally a smoke screen, but you can see there that it says you feel a bit more experience. It's already dead. It kills it really, really effectively. So, there's a little trick for you. Next time you're having difficulty dealing with... I don't even have any evo evocations right now, so... That's a really useful trick to use against those guys. Okay. 
think that he's rampaging. I always like distortion and rampaging as a combo. Rampaging is a new ego in this game that they have recently, which is one that I think is very, very cool. It plays very nicely. So, hopefully we can find some, some boots. Basically, about to die from like random water moccasin. Good to know. Those are my spells. Oh, do I have any new curse? Yes, okay. Protection from fire means. Nice, nice. That's good. You're very protective from fire in case we need to be. Swing a mephetic cloud and stealth arrow on this guy. Okay. Um, petrify. Yeah, you know what? I should just be using petrify on all these guys. None of them have good magical distance. And what the fuck? A swamp dragon here? That's a load of shit. I mean, for me, it's an XP pinata. Boom. Boom. Already done. But normally, for most characters, that would be a nightmare at this point in the game. I mean, not being able to... It's basically like a... I guess it's... The Hydra with a ranged attack. So there's a Hydra. I'm thinking we're going to petrify it. Close the distance and devour it with a terror reality. See, I think I don't know if this is true, but the devour with the terror and reality or whatever that I think is way more likely when the enemy is asleep here. But uh, I guess it's also likely in general. So. Anyway. So we're going to petrify. Well, let's just be getting really lucky. Again? No, we're just going to banish everything that we see. Because it's easy that way. See, this is the power of distortion, is when you deal damage, when you can just kill everything in one hit, and it's dangerous, you don't need to worry about damage or, you know, important stuff like that. Hmm. Alright, maybe my Fetic Cloud. These guys can kind of swarm you. It can be hard to deal with. There we go. I was just gonna say still no heal wounds, but lo and behold, there it be. I don't think I wanna Forget about that. 
it's, they, they used to be called spiny fox. They, they, now they're called cane toads, which is an interesting name. I don't actually know what a cane toad is. I've heard it's something Australian. Let's see if you can just deal with that on the own. So, our friend here is one level away from being able to cast paralysis, which happens when you turn level 14. So, that's going to be really nice. Again, petrify. Probably going to be using petrify for most of the game, really. Enemies don't get magic resistance until much later on, so. So what we're going to do here is we're going to petrify this water moccasin, and we're going to use it as a means of escaping from this interaction. So we're going to give it a second. Uh, here comes... Oh, he can move him out of the way? I didn't know that. Okay, so we're going to just run. In fact, we're going to use Passwall to make some distance. Uh, so there's a Blink Frog. Poisoning a few times. Blink Frogs, I don't know if they ever change this, but they don't. Um, take damage from they don't take damage from distortion space warping for some reason. Uh, I think it's kind of silly actually. I'm not sure I understand the, that flavor there. But I mean I guess it kind of makes sense. Seems a little spoilery but I don't know, maybe they got rid of it. Seems like one of those little spoilery things that Doves would have gotten right off my nose, so it's probably not in the game anymore. But I like to share little artifact tidbits of games past. Playing this game since I think 1.1 was the first version I ever played. Oof, long, long time ago. It has to be it. At least a couple of years since maledictions. Uh, I don't think we're going to use anything from this. Yeah, we're not using anything from Book of Maledictions. Mm. Mm. So there's a yak pack. We're going to blast it with some prophetic clouds. Yes. So we're going to try to petrify this. We're just going to try to escape. Go up the stairs here and try to kill these things. More or less, more and more. We're going to go down the staircase now. Petrify. Petrify, and I'll oh, just go back up the staircase. Okay. So now we're going to see if we can deal with this Hydra again. Panda. It's not a panda, it's a polar bear. Rupert! Uh, we should just go to a different floor. We don't want to deal with Rupert. 
We don't want anything to do with your perfection. Your brutes may be one of the most dangerous units in the game. One of the most dangerous lair units, I would say. In fact, I'd, I'd go as far as to say he's probably the most dangerous lair unit. He has the ability to paralyze you and then just mangle you. In some enemies, they can paralyze you and you'll be okay. But him, no way. Not a chance. Just my to cloud this. This little polar bear. I think I had panda bears in. Mamba. Another tear in reality. Whew, you know what they say, another day, another tear in reality, right? That's how I feel in this game. If I find a weapon of distortion, man, even a, even a kind of a crummy weapon, like a flail of distortion. The flails, this is the, the flail is the analog to the scimitar, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's the analog to the scimitar. So each each weapon class has similar weapons to it that deal similar base damage. And base damage does, might not seem like much, but it actually plays a pretty significant role in how powerful the weapon is. That's why the Morning Star, which has three more base damage, was, you know, I had to at least think about it before I went to the Distortion brand. The thing the Distortion brand has going for it with this guy is the fact that, I mean, obviously the terrors in reality are just ripping through enemies, but also the fact that, just a little bit, also the fact that the um, teleporting away is kind of nice, in a sense. It's a little convenient for getting the stabs, but, I mean, on the other hand, being able to teleport away dangerous enemies, and deal with them at a distance is kind of nice. Oh, okay, well, this is necessarily where I want to be. So, let's go sand blast. Stone arrow, stone arrow. Nice. Back for that in just a moment. Let's maybe try dealing with these guys in a corridor here. Okay. Um, there's a cane toad. Petrify it. Pick up that scroll. I wonder if that's a scroll of teleportation. So there's a buckler. That's what we want. We're all about the bucklers here. And in fact, I'm actually going to just train this to four real quick. Because it won't take very long. And that's all it takes to get bucklers to not affect your spells or your dodging at all. So petrify. Petrify, petrify, petrify. I shouldn't have bothered to petrify. Petrify, petrify. Okay. Yeah, we could use Rampage, and Rampage would be really good on this character. Oh, 
there. That's where we're put to this. Petrify this Komodo dragon here. And see, we're already almost level 4 shields. Easy, easy, easy. Alright. There's a five hundred hydra. We're gonna petrify this guy. Um I believe this has no AC, so sandblast would make a good target for it. Yeah, maybe I should have been using Sandblast against these Hydras to begin with. Because they have no AC at all. No armor protection. So let's go back to Aces and Flails. Um, okay. Blink Frog. situation here. Let's drag up this blink frog. Just fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Ancestral recall. There's a viscous altar. I'm not gonna, probably not going to do Jiva this game. I'm a big fan of switching to it. Jiva, Johad, or whatever Jiva's name is. Especially when you can get the free slime rune, but with this guy, I think it's easier, or it will be easier just to polymorph or something like that. Yeah. Or no, wait. We're Earth Elementalists. We're going to be doing slime. We're just going to be shattering through the, through the vault. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Usually, I like to kill. I like to kill the royal jelly by doing the vulnerability scroll trick, where you can reduce its. Uh, you can basically make it so you can paralyze it and then stab it, or you can, you can polymorph it or whatever. You can do whatever you want to it uh, after you use the vulnerability scroll, and then you can kill it fairly easily. That way you don't need to go deal with the whole dangerous situations that you land in with Vaults 5. Um, that's what I do with most of my games. Very few of my games do I actually go for the Silver Rune of Zot. Slime Rune is much easier to get, in my opinion. Um, almost laughably so. Um, there are definitely characters that I've gotten three runes in that would never have survived Volts 5. Not a chance. But that's why there are options. Four-headed Hydra, not as dangerous as the other ones. This one I don't think can one-hit kill me. So I just attack it. This one also can't one-hit kill me. But apparently, it, it has <laughs> devoured by tear in reality yet again. Where it feels like it's so much more common than it really is. I think it's only like 5%. I 
like a 1 in 20 chance. Basically, basically it's the chance of a d20 per hit, I think. In fact, I kind of want to Google that real quick. Let's see. Um, let's do... Oh, I'll do that later. I'll do that in between episodes. Shiny plate armor. Probably not going to wear that. Pathetic cloud. Deal with the wolf pack. That was my team mascot when I was in high school. We were the Park High School Wolf Pack. Oops. So this is a condenser vein, otherwise known as the best item in the game, besides a shield. These condenser the condenser vein is a really powerful evocable item that lets you put a cloud on every single enemy in line of sight, and it actually puts it around it, I think. So it's really really strong, especially for dealing with big situations where it's dangerous. Um, even at low levels, it does mephetic clouds. So, we're at layer 5. Um, normally, I would go clear orc, orc, two, orc 1, and maybe orc 2. Um, but given that our orc 1 is guarded by just a disgusting band of bastards, it was like two knights, three warriors, and a and a sorcerer? Fuck that. We're not dealing with that right now. We're going to go deal with layer 6 instead. Uh, so there's an elephant pack down here. And that is why we're going to go to a different staircase. Well, I guess it's unavoidable. So Confetti Cloud is going to be our best friend here. Confetti Cloud again to make sure these guys can't hurt us. Petrify. Petrify. Confetti Cloud. Staircase. Do that. Recall ancestor. And we'll go back down the staircase. Fed cloud. Drag these guys up. I fed a cloud on myself. Try to reach both of these guys. And the reason why I'm resistant to the mephetic cloud effect is only because I have this cloak of poison resistance, which I got from Crazy Uf. The Crazy Uf, or whatever his name is. Just a weird knoll. So there is a Lindworm. They can deal a lot of fire damage. In fact, oh, that's weird. They're not showing the abilities for these. <sighs> Get alert to let PF know. But they're not showing the ability damage anymore, which I think they're supposed to. So we're going to use that on him, and we're going to use it on the windworm. Windworm is out of view, so we're just gonna try to kill this guy for the time being. Fed cloud. Powered by a hole. Really, we need to hope that we don't get banished, because if we get banished, we're gonna be dealing with a lot of nasty shit. Oh, there we go. We got ourselves some blinking. Some blink action. So we'll just train this up to two. 
That should be plenty. In fact, probably not even two, probably 1.5. It's a big old yak pack. So we're going to Mephetic Cloud some of these guys. Come up, call Mephetic Cloud again. Boom. Do you have Paralyze yet? Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't level 14 that they get it. They get Paralyzed. They get it at level 15. Something to look forward to. Petrify. Maybe, um, stone arrow it. Yeah, there we go. In fact, what if we just stone arrow it? What if we sandblasted these? Yeah, maybe I should just be sandblasting the hydras. I said that earlier, but I just didn't do it for some reason. So, these guys have three pips, three little plus signs of magic resistance. So petrification isn't going to work on them. They're more dangerous, bigger yaks, you know, because they're called death yaks, obviously. And the general strategy for yaks is going to be to try to separate them from the pack. You want to deal with them one on one, and if you deal with them one on one, they're not that dangerous, really. Um, so, and maybe see if you can kill that one. Okay, see, not too dangerous, but when they're all together, it can be pretty overwhelming, actually. Kind of a similar situation with elephants, but elephants. Elephants aren't as scary because they don't have death in the name. Really, elephants are kind of just better death yaks, but I don't really think of them like that. Basically, death yaks with worse magic resistance. So, I guess they're not that much better. Cloud. It's a Bogart? So here's a trick. Bogarts have really low HP. So if you just use um, poisonous vapors on them, they just die like really, really fast. Um, didn't die as fast as they usually do there. Probably should have used it a couple times. All right. Fighting. Is that all the training right now? We should be training dodging. Sleepy sheepies. Sleepy, sleepy sheepies. Dream sheep. Uh, would be good to use against these guys. A fetic cloud? Because they don't have poison resistance? Yeah. Look at that. Oh. 
Um, hmm. Maybe. Uh, this is too many enemies, and a lot of them are, in fact, almost all of them are fast, and we don't have teleportation, so I'm not really comfortable with where we are here. So let's do this. Let's use condenser vein. <laughs> this is so stupid. Look at this. I used a single item. I haven't trained a lick of, e of evocations. And I fill the whole screen with fire? God. So good. The reason why I say it's the best item in the game besides the shield. So let's use this acid wand. What am I doing? Why am I even bothering using the acid wand? That just killed everything for me. Okay. So we'll do the trick with the Bogart. Stoned him for me. Um, where did my music go? Looking behind the scenes. I wonder if my internet connection's just gone right now. I didn't realize it. Hopefully not. That would suck. There's a bunch of death yaks. Okay. Bogart down. I remember a long time ago, summons used to not be. Used to didn't used to not know what was summoned and what was. So if you if you notice uh, if you see another Bogart, you can see that they have a little purple thing next to them. That shows that they're summons. That they're not permanent. But you didn't used to know that. You had to like scroll over it to know if it was summoned, or you just had to know. I can't remember which one. If Pathetic cloud. Pathetic cloud. Pathetic cloud. Which is kind of weird. A lot of interesting design choices back in the Dizzy. scroll let's see if let's actually read some of these multiple stacks one of them is pro this this four stack is probably teleportation fear three stack there we go I had a feeling one of these stacks was gonna be teleportation as it should be it's um, mythetic cloud these things. Does it? Easy does it there, boy. So we're going to separate one of these yaks from the pack, just like we were talking about before. Um, we're going to drag this one up. Throw a fetid cloud on it. doesn't have poison resistance but it has a really high hit die meaning that um, it's harder to hit it 
and make it stick with Mephetic Cloud. Because Mephetic Cloud, um, obviously they're immune to the effects if they are poisoned, just like I am, poison resistance. But hit dice depends on how long and how quickly they're going to get poisoned. So I'm thinking we're going to do strength for this. Yeah, we'll do strength. Um, our current encumbrance rating is 7 plus. Uh, it doesn't do encumbrance rating for that. So that should be high enough. I don't think we're going to raise strength anymore. Also going to stop training dodging. Let's see. I'm thinking evocations trained up to 10 is our next move because we have some pretty good evocables. We have box of beasts. We have paralysis. We have acid. Yeah, we want our evocables up a little bit. Oh, whoops. We're just gonna mephetic cloud these guys. See if we can maybe deal with two of them at once. Cardinal sin of dungeon crawl. Fighting two enemies at once? What are you, a madman? Like I said, fighting two enemies at once, it's crazy talk. This is basically a dueling simulator. I don't really use any of my Hirari needles. Probably should. Should also be using sand blast a lot more. Sand blast is really powerful. Should not be taken lightly. Uh, sleepy sheepies. Cloud. That's what they do. Is they cause you to fall asleep and stuff. Oh, there's a death yak. That is AC, so we're not going to use it on him. I believe this does too. Yes, it does. Um, okay, we're pretty much cleared. Pretty much cleared all of Lair. We got this little section over. Here. That is a wand of acid. That's really bad for us. So we want to kill this really, really fast. Um, so we're going to do sandblast. Because I don't think it can be dodged. Okay. So. Wand of acid down. Uh, what kind of ghost is this? Just a crummy. Mm. Oh, let's not bother. So I'm going to go check this. Sometimes this has little secret passages that you don't get from Auto Explorer. Kind of nothing. All right, we cleared a layer, and now we're going to go back to Orc. That's the plan. I'm going to leave the safe confines of the Lair of Beasts and begin to traverse 
perilous land known as the Orcish Mines. Alright, next time. See you then.